This is a general disclaimer. Redlands Community College attempts to have the most accurate and up-to-date information listed in its content and delivery. However, your education is your responsibility. Redlands Community College or Roy Smith makes no guarantee in the accuracy of this information in this video and accepts no liability for the informational video. The information expressed is strictly the opinion of the author and the presenter, which is listed in the reference near the end of the video. This information is designed to supplement your own education or initial education and should not be used to replace any current academic program you're enrolled in. View the information and content at your own risk. Thank you. This is going to be Chapter 21, Algorithmic Approach to Airway Management. And after completion of this chapter, you'll be able to understand algorithms that provide a specific plan set of actions and decision where the if-then decisions are made in advance, ways the paramedic utilizes an algorithmic approach to airway management, the five criteria that determine how aggressive an approach to airway and respiratory management is needed, disease processes encountered in the pre-hospital environment that can cause a patient, the patient's airway, or the patient's respiratory status to deteriorate, the algorithmic approach to patients who initially cannot be ventilated, and airway management after a failed innovation attempt. So airway management is a very critical task. The consequences of an unmanaged and poorly managed airway are devastating. No oxygen, the body just goes into an anaerobic state of metabolism and things go south. Emergency airways in general are very difficult. Uh, Pre-planning is crucial. Algorithms, a working diagnosis, and the working diagnosis is a group of patient care activities based on a presumptive conclusion. Now what this means is, is we need clinical evidence. Once we find the clinical evidence, we make a working diagnosis, and from there we apply treatment. Protocol, details of a specific group of activities that are all to be accomplished for a given patient for specific presumptive diagnoses. Now most of us work underneath a protocol base, and we modify the base of this protocol depending upon the response. So if we are in the middle of this protocol and we're not getting the response we need, we need to reevaluate our working diagnosis. Advantages. If then decisions are made in advance and what a protocol or an algorithm gives us is if this occurs then we do this. If this occurs then we do this. And it gives us a motivation for continuing action. So this is an example of an algorithm. This is an algorithm to defibrillate someone. And defibrillation, did they convert to a sinus rhythm? If the answer is yes, administer antiarrhythmic therapy. If the answer is no, then we need to start CPR and go back at it again. But this gives us the ability to take a look at treatments and apply if-then statements. So an example of this. Did they convert to sinus rhythm? Yes. Or no. If no, start CPR. If yes, administer antiarrhythmic therapy. So very simply, it gives us a stair-step approach to treatment. Important considerations. Algorithms only serve as a guide. Uh, they're not situation specific. So very simply, the algorithm is there to remind us what to do, but they are guidelines. Paramedics should understand a routine and routinely apply airway management algorithms, and this would be non-innovated versus innovated algorithms to manage a patient's airway. Critically important tools are the equipment, the education, practice, and a thorough knowledge base of what you're getting yourself into. The development of algorithms. Algorithms are the tool of choice for unstable pre-hospital patients. Classes that rely on algorithms include advanced cardiac life support, pediatric advanced life support, and the ASA's difficult airway algorithm. Assessment of an algorithmic impact, of an algorithm's impact. Difficult airway algorithm. And there's some problems with it that you'll read in your book. It's confounded by numbers of variables. And this means that there was more variables in this. It wasn't clear and concise. So this still is in development. The number of cases that they applied to this data were only 98 strong. Uh, confounding factors, but whenever the um, airway algorithm got M, M, uh, deployed essentially, no laryngeal mask airways 
were available to place them into the study before the algorithm was published. So this is in, innovation based. And the data, only historical data or anecdotal data or data in the past is available to compare with the new data that was uh, achieved by these 98 cases. So there's not much of a, um, a base on this algorithm, but it seems to be working. So we will probably see in the next few years us adjusting this algorithm off of evidence-based medicine. Pre-hospital airway management algorithms. Many algorithms are available. Some do not fit well. Um, an algorithm cannot fit into every situation, so it's a guideline. You still have to understand the knowledge base of what what diseases are in play whenever you make a working diagnosis. An integrated approach to airway management. The decision to innovate and or provide respiratory support algorithm. So this is innovate, non innovate uh, non-innovated airway management algorithm. So this is at the point that we decided not to innovate the patient. And then an innovated airway al management algorithm. So in each one of these, the first one, do we innovate or not? That would be the question on this. So there's an algorithm approach to that. The non-innovated airway management patient, at this point we have assessed the patient and pretty much figured out that they do not require an innovation. And from there, we're going to use other techniques. That does not mean that we could start off down this path and not have to regroup and, and, and end up innovating our patient. And then, last but not least, the innovated airway management algorithm, which is we have assessed the patient, we have decided that they require innovation, and now we're going to facilitate that. <clears throat> the indication for definitive airway control, and this is table 21.1 in your book, a non-patent airway, so there's no air that's coming in or out. Inability to maintain a patent airway, so the patient can't help you with the maintenance of this airway. Failure to oxygenate the patient. Failure to ventilate. Anticipate deterioration of the patient's status or airway status. Now, things are going to go south from here if we don't get an airway on board. This is figure 21.2, decision to innovate and or provide respiratory support algorithm. And on these, we essentially start up there at the top. So start here. Does the patient have an open airway? If the answer is yes, is the patient protecting their airway? This ends quite quickly if we follow this path down. Can the patient's airway status be expected to deteriorate? If the answer is no, then very simply provide supportive care and transport. If any of these get a no, then it goes immediately to the right. Example, does the patient have a patent airway? No. Do simple airway maneuvers fix, fix it? If yes, then go to the next step here. If no, go to supportive ventilation or go to appropriate airway management algorithm. Now, if you can't ventilate the patient on their own and a BLS airway or a simple adjunct does not work, then you're probably going to have to facilitate an airway. Let me clear this off here. All right, so, so on this side of it, very simply, and your initial intervention here, the ultimate dispositions here, and this is table 21.2. I'm not going to speak about all of this, but essentially this is your decision tree if we need to innovate the patient or not. So please look over this and become very familiar with it. If we think that Narcotics or overdose might be in play. Administer Narcan and D50. Supplement oxygen does not improve oxygenation. Consider Narcan and D50 if not already given successful. Supportive ventilation. So anything exits out to the right of any of this decision that's in the middle. And we're essentially going to go provide more ALS means of airway intervention. Uh, these are conditions requiring emergency transport. This is table 21.2 in your book. Abnormal vital signs that cannot be corrected or do not respond to treatment. An unmanageable airway, and that's what kind of we're talking about here. Unmanageable airway. Ischemic compromise of an extremity, so they're fixing a lose at extremity or an asphyxiated limb. Complicated delivery, uncontrollable bleeding, cardiac re arrest reversal with abnormal vital signs, so they're still in shock. 
cardiac arrests without defibrillation or medications available. So you're in BLS mode or first responder mode, and the patient is essentially in cardiac arrest. So an ALS bridge of some sort or an ALS intercept or a transport emergency to an ALS intercept would be the most likely assessment off of that. A non intubating airway management algorithm. Now this is figure 21.3 in your book. And very simply, this is the non intubated version. So what that means is, is you have already assessed your patient and you have come up to the conclusion that you do not require intubation. So patient assessment, patient needs airway or respiratory support, pre-oxygenate, open the airway, was it successful, listen to the patient's lungs. If it's successful, then you're, you're golden and transport. Uh, attempt to ventilation, successful. If we go no all the way to the bottom of this, transport emergency, consider requesting a physician intercept. This would be if you did not have the ability to facilitate an intubation. All right, this is 21.4 in your book, intubated airway management. So this is at the point that you have decided to intubate your patient. Patient needs to be intubated, pre-oxygenate the patient. If patient is breathing, breathing consider a nasal intubation. Uh, attempt oral tracheal intubation if it's successful. Confirm by another method, monitor, uh, secure the tube and monitor the patient. If it's not successful, ventilate, reassess provider, patent, and equi patient, and equipment. Attempt intubation times two. Was it successful? Hopefully at this point. So then again, confirm by other means and secure the tube and monitor your patient. If no, ventilate or prepare blind insertion device and this would be like a laryngeal mask airway or a king attempt biad placement successful if it was then go ahead and monitor the patient secure the tube attempt to ventilate with bvm atv successful if this is all no consider obstructed airway if unable to clear obstruction attempt surgical airway was that successful and essentially what we got here is these are all ALS airway interventions. This is table 21.3 uh, from the National Association of EMS Physicians uh, definition of an innovation attempt. So whenever we try two innovation attempts, this would be the criteria that would say we attempted an innovation. So insertion of the laryngeal scope into the patient's mouth, insertion of the tube through the nares or nose in a nasal tracheal method, insertion of a rescue airway device in the, mo in the mouth, uh, combi tube, LMA, or, or other oral rescue airway devices, insertion of rescue airway devices through the neck uh, for cricothyrotomy, needle jet ventilation, retrograde intubation, and other surgical methods of airway management. So any of these attempts consider as an, as an attempt on an intubation. So whenever you're documenting, be sure that whenever you, you write down, I attempted twice before I progress down the algorithm, this would be your defining characteristics for your attempt. In conclusion, airway management can be one of the most life-saving tasks that you perform. Algorithms can greatly enhance consistent and correct task performance during life-threatening emergencies. A value of an algorithmic approach to airway management has been recognized by professional organizations, ACLS, PALS, and so on. It is important to recognize that an algorithm is written for the majority of the situations. It is not a one-size-fits-all. The paramedic must recognize that an algorithm is simply one more tool to improve patient care. While it does not replace clinical judgment in a specific situation, it allows a systematic approach that will enhance patient care. References for this lecture are taken from Richard Beebe, Professional Paramedic, Volume 1, Foundations of Paramedic Care, First Edition, pages 378 through 391 of Del Mar Learning. And if you have any questions concerning this chapter, feel free to give me a call. My name is Roy Smith, smithr at imsa.net or 405-219-7613. Thank you.